Bible study for everybody met on the 19th of March. I wanted to thank Jim for his filling in for me last week during the end times discussion. We were, the last time I was there, we, I foolishly thought that we could get through the entire chapter, seventh chapter of Mark and into the 26th verse of the eighth chapter. In reality, of course, what we covered was 7-1 through 7-30. And so the preview for tonight is that we're going to go back and cover uh, 731 through 826. The uh, couple of incidents that are discussed in uh, 7-1 through 7-30 are the uh, teaching and healing ministry of Jesus, his uh, telling the people that the defilement or filth or wrong or evil or comes from within us and not from without us and so it cannot be cured from within from outside of us it has to be cured from inside out and the second uh, story was the uh, healing of the Syrophoenician woman who um, asked for the scraps from the table that's all discussed in the uh, earlier version that I posted. Tonight we're going to talk about the healing of a deaf mute in the Decapolis area, the feeding of 4,000, the yeast of the Pharisees, and the healing of the blind man in Bethsaida. So where are we? Well, he went from Tyre, uh, which is here on our screen, up to Sidon, and uh, then came down into the region of the Decapolis, which is on the east side of the uh, Sea of Galilee in this area somewhere. Um, the first uh, few verses tonight, verses 31 through 37, discuss a rather elaborate procedure that he went through to heal the deaf mute. Uh, and the question was, why did he go through this procedure? He took the man aside, he put his fingers in his ears, he spit and touched it to his tongue, he sighed deeply, and eventually he cures this fellow. Well, I think the lesson is that Jesus meets people, individuals, where they are. Uh, and touching this deaf mute's ears kind of indicated something's going to happen here, and touching his tongue indicates something's going to happen here, and so he's trying to enter into the world of this deaf mute. Additionally, Mark uses the word that I have on the screen there, moglialos. That's a Greek word written in English, by the way. Um, but it roughly means deaf mute. That word only appears one other time in the um, uh, Old Testament, and that's in Isaiah 35, uh, verses uh, 5 and 6. Um, and, and those verses say, um, then blind eyes will open, deaf ears will hear, then the lame will leap like a deer, the mute tongue will shout for joy, for water will flow in the desert and streams in the wilderness. And I think it was uh, on purpose that Mark used that word and pointed his readers to Isaiah. From uh, that area, they were over in the Decapolis area. They were still in that region somewhere, as the arrows indicate. And the next story is the feeding of the 4,000. And I asked the question, what is the most uh, biggest difference in the feeding of the 4,000? And I think the difference, the biggest difference, uh, there are a lot of details that are different, but I think the biggest difference is that this audience, these 4,000 men plus women and children, were mostly Gentiles. He was in a Gentile area over here on the uh, eastern side of the uh, Sea of Galilee somewhere, and so my guess would be that they were mostly Gentiles. And so the lesson is that Jesus came to uh, minister to the entire world. Yes, indeed, he first came to the lost sheep of Israel, but he soon broadened his ministry and was um, everywhere in the area, uh, as we can see from these maps. Next, they immediately got in the boat and went to with his disciples to the area of Dalmanutha, 
Well, Dalmanutha is over here on the western shore somewhere. And uh, on the western shore, as soon as he gets there, the very next thing that happens is the Pharisees uh, tell him they, they come to him immediately and they want a sign. Show us a sign. Uh, now, I don't know what they've been thinking for all the things that he's been doing and all the healing and all the miracles he's been making, but they want a sign. Now, the word sign to the, to the Hebrews meant uh, something very significant, like the, the stamp of approval, the, the real deal here. Um, it was not just a, some casual thing, but uh, uh, still they, they had watched him do all these things and they wanted a sign. And I, the discussion last night was, well, they wanted a sign that was like cataclysmic and then they might come up with some faith. And what Jesus was looking for was faith and then he went about uh, doing things in in that arena. They uh, uh, then he, they get immediately back on the boat and they're going back across the Sea of Galilee. And he gets into this discussion, really a scolding with the sea with the Pharisees about because uh, they think he's talking about bread to eat and why don't they bring bread bread on the boat and. Um, he, they cannot see uh, or do not understand. Their hearts are hardened. They don't see that this is the work of God that is going on in their midst. Um, and he really kind of scolds them. Uh, uh, and I think he's given them a little bit of a slap upside the head to because uh, he's got to get their attention because in 827, uh, we're going to start into, he's going to start heading for his crucifixion, burial, and resurrection, and he's got to get these guys ready, and they've got to come up, they've got to start to catch it. Um, and in verse 21, he ends by saying, how is it you don't understand? I did all these things. I fed all these people. All this stuff was left, and you don't understand. What is it? How is it that you don't understand? And then at that point, they arrived back on the eastern side, and uh, uh, went to the region of Bethsaida, which is up here. And uh, a, br uh, a blind man was brought to him, and he, he um, again went through a bit of a procedure. He goes through a different procedure with everyone he meets. It's not a, a cookie-cutter kind of thing. He, he touches this man's eyes, uh, and he, he he. Puts his hands on him. He asks him if he sees anything. The man says, "I see trees, men like trees walking." And he puts his hands back on his eyes, and he clarifies his vision. I think there are two lessons in the healing of these people this week. One is that he meets everyone where they are. He meets their needs. Why is Jesus called Wonderful Counselor? It's not because he needs to do these things. It's because the people with whom he's interacting need to be met where they are. And be, he identifies with them, he meets them where they are, and he does what's best for them. If we look at the story, for example, of uh, Lazarus in the John, the book of John, in chapter 11, verse 21, he asks Martha, uh, or Martha says to him, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And his response to her is extremely different from when Mary comes to him in, verse 11, in chapter 11 of John, verse 32, says the exact same words. If you had not been here, my, my brother would not have died. His response is entirely different. He meets people where they are and meets their needs. That's why he's called Wonderful Counselor. And he will meet you and I where we are and meet our needs. <clears throat> Second point is that this two state is probably that this healing process is liable to be a process, just as spiritual understanding is probably a process. So uh, spiritual revelation, spiritual understanding uh, may not take place all at the same time, just as healing, physical healing, may not take place all at the same time, but rather 
be a process for us. It was quite a discussion. Next week, we're going to start with chapter 8, verse 27, and try to get through all 11 verses to the end of chapter 8. As I said, uh, Mark takes a, a changes a tact here at this middle of his book, and now Jesus is going to begin to talk about his upcoming arrest, humiliation, crucifixion, burial, and resurrection. And he's got to get these guys ready for this so that they understand what is going on. Look forward to seeing you next week. God bless.